In a season of almost, a lot of almost, Alabama almost played a pretty good game yesterday. Let's talk about it. Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey again, everybody, and welcome to Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, John, that's him. Jim, how are you today? Uh, I'm doing great, uh, except for the fact we're just down to one college football Saturday. That's that's a swift kick in the pants. It is, um, and want to thank you all for making this your first listen. Jimmy, I let off the podcast saying it's really a season of almost. I started thinking about uh, yesterday, even, right after the Alabama game, you know, there were some other games that were very close. I mean, the Michigan game came down to field goal. ECU came down to a hectic field goal. USC uh, won by three points. Tennessee got absolutely buried, but let's push them to the side. Maryland gave Ohio State all they wanted, and I guess it was – I didn't see the final touchdown. I'm assuming it was a defensive it touchdown was. they scored to make it. it um, right. But Maryland gave them all they wanted. There were all these things. Georgia was only up 16 to 6, and then Kentucky just Kentucky did up. Um, there were all these things that that made it so that Alabama would have had a shot at the playoffs, whether there was warranted or not, is, is up for debate. But um, and none of them really came to fruition. And on top of that, on top of that, Jimmy, you know, we won 34 to nothing. That was one of the sloppiest, ugliest 34 to nothings, and and there's so many. Uh, layers we got to peel off this this onion. I'm worried to death about playing Auburn. I swear to God, and I know some people may think I'm crazy. I think the lines already come out at like 25 or 26, which is bananas. But um, yeah, I'm man, I'm I'm kind of down today, Jimmy. Well, I'm down over the almost that didn't happen. I think while so many Alabama fans out there uh, prefer to rant about. They don't like this team. They are upset about this player or that player or the players in general. Even more fans are preferring to rant about uh, O'Brien and Golding, some even directing their ire at Nick Saban. Uh, that seems just to be the, the topic of choice is how upset they are. Uh, while everybody else upset, and it's not that I'm blind to, to what's happened with the football team, my focus yesterday was on getting in the playoff because I saw the path. Uh, I joked about it early in the week. I mean, I literally did. For those of you who read my stuff, I joked about it on the board. I joked about it on Twitter. It was a half joke, but there was also some half seriousness in it. And the half seriousness was there literally is a path, people. There is a path. It's it's not like Alabama is mathematically eliminated like, like you might be from a pennant race. That was not the case at all. There was a path in, and I think people now see the path, which is now, by the way, pretty much closed off. But – Luke, I, I think it's this close. I think as we sit right here, I think it's extremely possible that should Alabama beat Auburn, uh, and I believe they will, should Alabama beat Auburn uh, in the final CFP when, when they announce the playoff, it, it, it'll it'll be a foregone conclusion that, it, that it's Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, and TCU. I think all four, I think the loser of Ohio State, Michigan, is still going to get in because – if Clemson loses to South Carolina or North Carolina and USC loses to Notre Dame, who's playing extremely well, or Oregon, who's also playing well, uh, then Alabama is very likely to finish fifth. One spot yeah. out. And it would have been top four had TCU lost to Baylor. And, and that, that's how close Alabama came to making the playoff regardless. I, I'm with you. And again, it is sort of a dilly of a pickle to quote Ned Flanders um, for, for me, because I, I hear you. And look, I'm not I'm not down on the team. I know there's some people down on the team. I'm not down on the team. I did come up with the name Bill O'Boring during the contest, which I tweeted out. And I think should catch fire and I hope goes viral because I thought that we looked rather pedestrian yesterday offensively and we shouldn't now. Getting to the game itself, but only for a second, because I don't want to forget this. If you don't think there's still something wrong with Bryce Young's shoulder, you're out of your mind. Because I'm telling you, 
the man just is playing. He is a warrior for us right now. He is playing through a lot of pain. There's no doubt in my mind about that. And um, so I appreciate you, Bryce Young, because I'm telling you, he could not throw that ball as far as he needed to for a long touchdown that would have been to Jermaine Burton. By the way, I'm fine with Jermaine Burton, but – Hey, I need you to catch a touchdown in a game that's not Austin P or whoever the hell we played in the first game. I know he caught one against Ole Miss, but I need him to show up in, in a big game. Great start. Let's start with the Iron Bowl and see what happens. Um, but, Jimmy, you know, it's, it's, it's such a tough year because this is such an average year in college football. Even Georgia, who's pretty doggone good. They kind of stunk it up against Missouri. They stunk it up against Kentucky. I mean, yeah, they did blow South Carolina out. They got some good wins. They took Tennessee to the woodshed. But, shoot, South Carolina just took Tennessee to the woodshed too. So, um, I think it's just an average year. And th- we had it, man. We could have grabbed this thing. It wouldn't have been an all-time team like we thought in the beginning of the year. But, man, we could have had this thing. And um, it just slipped from our grasp for so many reasons. And, um, you know, it's just – it, it's it's kind of a downer, but I'm hoping – here's what I hope. and I'm hoping that we show up against Auburn. Forget the bowl game. Forget it. I mean, yeah, we're going to play in one, but I want to show up against Auburn, and I want Saban to, to convey the message, this is the bowl game. Everybody's right. playing. Jameer Gibbs is back. Latu's back. Bryce is going to play. All these things. Everybody's in, okay? And we're going to go into over there and spank their butts. Because they've got an interim coach, they don't have a great team. They've got a bad offensive line that gave up, uh, you know, some some pressure against Western Kentucky too. So let's let's go. Let's make this our statement game. What I'm worried is going to happen is we show up with the same attitude we seemingly have had every single game, which is eh, let's roll it out there and see how this thing goes. We yesterday, Jimmy, gave up three sacks on Bryce Young, not a backup. They sacked Bryce Young three times in the first half yesterday. We, Bryce Young had only been sacked, I think, eight times coming into the game. That's amazing. Yeah, it really is. I mean, to me, it's the single most defining stat of the game in terms of like, what? Because a lot of the stats were fine. A lot of the stats, when you look at the stat sheet, you're like, this was a big blowout. I mean, Alabama really crushed this team. But then you circle two numbers, Luke, the sacks given up, which is – not a problem all year. People think it's a problem. That hasn't been a problem all year. Like you said, we basically gave up 50% of the sacks we'd given up all season as it relates to Bryce being sacked. That's crazy. It was a total outlier. That, that was an outlier, but against Austin P. And then the other number you circle is the three turnovers. I mean, that's outrageous against an Austin P who you wouldn't think you would have, have the, but, but, you know, Milrose pick, I mean, it was bad. I mean, it was, that was a bad interception. Uh, the fumble, uh, you know, even the punt, you know, return where 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 the ball hits. That was a little bit of bad luck. I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure that was a terrible play so much as bad luck on our part because I don't think that that player knew the ball was skipping behind him at at, at a great speed. Um, but regardless, uh, an odd performance. Uh, in retrospect, maybe we shouldn't have been surprised that it was a little flat. Keep in mind, some people thought we would play flat and not care against Ole Miss, which clearly wasn't the case. We didn't play great against Ole Miss, but we didn't care. Uh, didn't care much yesterday, but it's Austin P. It's it's the week before the Iron Bowl. Uh, it's still 34 to nothing. And, and you look at the stats. I mean, we had over 500 yards, which is you know pretty good against anybody. And they only had like, like right at 200 yards, which isn't much. Um, you know, statistically, we sort of handled our business. It was very, I, I guess an optimist would say that was a very business-like performance, but really it wasn't because we gave up three sacks, we turned over the ball three times. So there was still a lot of mistakes. There was still a lack of intensity uh, to a degree. Uh, and, and like you said, Luke, I, I think in so many ways that performance lined up with what we've seen all year. Although, uh, again, I think it was a little less intensity. Uh, I watched the team coming out of the stadium when they left, when the game was over and boarded the bus. That's not something I normally do. But even even watching that, you could tell there, there was a sleep. There was a sleepiness to it. Uh, and, and hopefully, like you said, Luke, I love that pep talk because I've, I've been comparing the season to 2010 for weeks now. And in 2010, we did put it all together at the end in the bowl game and played one of the best games of the Saban era, frankly. 
But that's unlikely to happen in the bowl game this time because yeah. we're going to have opt-outs. Now, Clemson will too, assuming we're playing Clemson, which I'm saying for about the third week in a row. Uh, I still believe it's Clemson in the Orange Bowl. Uh, they'll have opt-outs too. It's not like it's going to be unfair because – we won't have players out there and Clemson will have their whole team. That's not true. Their defensive line guys may opt out, you know, which is the the brunt of their team, frankly. But uh, I, I like what you said. I, I think if we're going to put it all together at the end, it's Auburn. It's not the bowl. I want to talk about that some more in a second. But first of all, I need to tell everybody about Simply Safe. If you've thought about securing your home with home security but have been putting it off, you'll want to listen up right now. Locked on Bama listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you won't want to miss it. Look, I love it. I have Simply Safe at my home. Um, I got a wife, got a six year old. It, it's so important. I got a, a lot of means of entry. Don't need anybody to get any ideas because I got Simply Safe. And um, so it, it's great when I'm on the road or, or uh, you know, somebody's babysitting, I know that we are protected. In an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system that I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com backslash locked on college. There's no safe. Like simply safe, Jimmy. Um, yeah, the whole Auburn thing. I mean, I really, I think if you want to encourage, if you want to give a a boost to the fan base, and I mean that's not going to be Saban's number one priority. Understand? But I think we could use it. We could use a B twelve shot right in the buttocks uh, for and B standing for Bama in this case. Bama twelve shot right in the buttocks. That doesn't. There's got to be another way to say that. But um. Anywho, I think really taking it to this Auburn team, which we are capable of, but here's the problem. It is, once again, a perfect storm of our uh, – boy, I, I hate to call it apathy, but it looked like apathy on Saturday. Um, it's close to apathy. We're just lethargic, I guess. Lethargy? Is that how you say lethargy? I think Lethargy? you can say – I think you can say lethargy. I would know what you meant if you said okay, it. Okay. If it's a word, but I know what you meant. Okay. And then Auburn is is like brimming with excitement. They have – I mean, frankly, look, if, in a real-world sense, Auburn barely beat Texas A&M and, frankly, got a lot of positive calls to do it. And Western Kentucky was tied with them at 17 at the half. And then Western Kentucky – I mean, the, the depth sort of wore on them. But in, in – um, fantasy voodoo land Auburn world, Auburn is playing with like all this momentum and they truly are. And they're not as bad as their record seems. They're not as good as they think they are right now, but that is dangerous. They're coming in thinking they're better than they are and like, yeah, we can go up against these guys when they should not be able to. They shouldn't. The, the On paper, this is not a contest. But Auburn was going to come in with a different mentality and I think, again, I'm I'm pro Cadillac getting the Auburn job because I don't think he'd be a great coach long term, but I admire what he's doing right now, and he's fired them up. So yes, we're not going to spend a ton of time today talking about the Auburn game, but I'm worried to death about it. I'm a. I look at it a couple of different ways. Luke, on paper, and and the game's not played on paper, but on paper, look at this. I mean, uh, I know this is my 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 rant, but I would ask you. So I'm going to ask the audience uh, to answer yourselves if you listen in your car or your home. Ask yourselves, okay, what. What is Auburn's best achievement? What's their best win? What, what is the, the best thing that they've done? Taking Mississippi State to overtime uh, as, as a more uh, stunt on the road as opposed to uh, beating uh, Texas A&M. But it's one of those two, right? I mean, that's the most incredible thing they've done. Is it, is it beating Missouri? Uh, I mean, Missouri's not going to a bowl. A&M's not going to a bowl. Mississippi State is going to a bowl, but you lost that game. And by the way, even though you lost in overtime, you were way behind before state mysteriously collapsed. Um, I, I, I just don't see what Auburn has done. Now, Alabama, on the other hand, hasn't been that great, we say. But who has Alabama lost to? Top 10 teams on the road by one play. Uh, top 10 
Arkansas. Arkansas is still going to finish in the top 10. LSU still may finish in the top 10. They're about to play Georgia for the SEC championship. Uh, Arkansas is not going to finish in the top 10. I don't mean to cut you off, but they've got five losses. Arkansas? You said Arkansas. You meant Tennessee. No, no, no. I said – oh, oh, did I? Oh, okay. Well, I meant Tennessee, Tennessee top 10 LSU. Those have been the Alabama losses. Uh, nothing on paper. Uh, you know, this is why Alabama's going to be favored by over 20 points. Uh, now, I, I believe, like you, Luke, if Alabama's favored by more than 20, uh, I, I might put money on Auburn myself. I think that line is re- absurd. Uh, but based on how the emotion that Auburn is playing with. But Alabama has lost to good top 10 teams on the road. Auburn has beaten no one good. They've beaten no one that's good. Uh, I, I think this game is about Alabama and not about Auburn. If Alabama shows up ready to play uh, a, a a good brand of Alabama football, they will win this game going away. Uh, and 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 I believe they will. I think there's just too many pieces. Now, this is what I think. I will admit this. A month ago, I would have said this is 42 to 7. A month ago, this was 42 to 7 or worse uh, a month ago. Now, Alabama's offense and a little bit of a funk. Auburn playing – uh, or supercharged emotionally, Auburn coming in thinking they're going to win the game. I can see it being close. As a matter of fact, I can see it being close for two to three quarters. But uh, I like Alabama winning this game. Right, I'm, I'm going to give it some thought during the week. But my early thought, Luke, is 27 to 14 in a game that might be 17 14 in the fourth quarter. All right, Jimmy, I'm going to go ahead now uh, and talk about Nissan. This week's thrilling moment in college football is brought to you by Nissan. The thrilling designs behind the new lineup from Nissan are intended to empower drivers and vehicles as capable as the drivers themselves. When I think of unbelievable abilities on the field for this week's thrilling moment, it has to be, well, you know, I think I've done this before, but I'm going to do it again. I, it just, just Bryce Young from this last weekend. And, and the reason I say that, he has moved into third all time on a passing list. Um, he's right behind John Parker Wilson. I think he's going to pass John Parker Wilson maybe in this next game. Um, very good shot at that. Um, he's he's not going to catch A.J. If he played another year, he would obliterate all the records. But um, he's not. He's going to go, and he should go pro, and good for him. But uh, Bryce Young, he deserves all these accolades that he's been getting. I think people are really looking around the country now and saying, hey, um, yeah, C.J. Stroud's good, and, uh, you know uh, – Duggan over at TCU is good. Um, some of these other dudes can play. Ain't nobody Bryce Young. Bryce Young has put the Alabama, this heavy Alabama on his back and done a marvelous job. So, uh, yeah, that's that's Nissan's thrilling moment this week. And um, this segment has been inspired by the thrilling new designs featured across Nissan's new lineup of vehicles. Pursue what thrills you in the all-new Frontier Armada or Pathfinder today, available at NissanUSA.com. Um, Jimmy, I think we can go back to this game for a minute, uh, although there's not a lot to glean from Austin P. right? I mean, I think we can agree there, although it's very scary. When, when I looked at the highlight state, I guess I didn't realize it in the moment. I was watching uh, SEC Network. By the way, if you have not seen the video of Peter Burns and Ben Watson, have you seen this? I was watching when it happened live. I was watching it live when it happened. Ben Watson said something about sure. her texting him about his suit. And Peter Burns said that's not what she texted him. And then went back from break. Peter Burns and Ben Watson weren't out there. And finally, Ben Watson walks back. I thought Peter Burns might be dead. And I get, I, I get uh, that sometimes you can make jokes like that. I would make sure you can clear that joke with somebody like a Benjamin Watson before you make that joke. Um, and Peter le- later put a picture of himself smiling and Ben Watson behind him. And Peter was like, friends, hashtag. And Benjamin was, also, was like, yeah, you still owe my wife an apology. I mean, we're friends, but yeah, whatever. And yes, the joke was a little, it, it, it was rather innocuous. It's not, most people would consider it probably not a big deal. I would make sure that Benjamin Watson didn't consider it a big deal before I made that joke, though. <laughs> Yeah, even watching it live and then on the aftermath, I'm still 50 50 um, on what happened and how friendly or not friendly it was. I, I, I watched it live and then read the fallout, and I'm not sure. I, I think that joke was uh, a miscalculation 
I think in, in Peter Burns' head, it was it was really funny. And I think maybe that is a joke. That's a joke that you can say between very close friends and a group of four or five people, not with a coworker in front of a, a, a national TV audience. I mean, that's the thing. That's All the right. thing. I mean, let's not, let's not spend the whole segment on it, but geez, I mean, I, it creeped me out. You talk about awkward. That was like an episode of The Office, creepy, awkward. I did not like it at all. It made me uncomfortable. It did. I, it did. And it made me, it made me, uh, I'm, frankly, I wasn't happy with Benjamin Watson's reaction, although I get it. I mean, I get it a little bit, <laughs> but I, I thought Ben totally overreacted to clearly a joke. Now, it's a little bit like the Chris Rock, Will Smith thing. I mean, you know, Chris Rock was telling a joke and here's the thing about that. You know, Chris, Chris, it, it wasn't really that funny. That felt like more of a shot than something that was funny because it wasn't that hilarious, you know, to, yeah. to say nothing of her condition. I felt it was a little bit like that. Like, Peter, man, you're, I like you and you're, you're sort of funny, but that was a miss, dude. And I think you owe Ben and his wife an apology uh, thing like, I mean, you know, uh, anyway, I, I didn't like it at all. Frankly, I thought the whole thing was a big, I, and, and again, I, I, I like Ben Watts and I, and I, I want to just, just keep playing the show guys and, and, yeah. and get, get back to the joke some other time. We got highlights to watch. Uh, my last point on it is um, if it was, if it was planned and I don't think it was, if it was planned like on the, off the cuff to, um, to, to do this, to create some uh, hits or likes, it was brilliant. If it wasn't planned, it's the one of the most awkward moments in live TV that I've ever seen. I agree. And if it was planned, that hey, 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 guys who planned that, that was stupid. It was stupid. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't entertaining. It was. Yeah. It was stupid and awkward. And and the whole thing was awkward. So yeah, but yeah, I watched live when it happened, and then and then when they came back, when they finally came back, it was Dari and not Peter. And I'm like, but. After I calmed down and realized, oh my God, Peter's like in the hospital, or they had to take Peter by him in my head, all these things are racing through. And then I remember, wait a minute, they're doing the SEC final show. That's always Dari. Yeah, that is. That oh, is. That's always Dari. So, yeah. Well, um, so uh, I want to talk a little bit about some of the other SEC games just very quickly, because again, our game, you know. Yeah, I want the main burden to play better against Auburn. I, I, hey, Jason McClellan, man, good on you, buddy. I mean, I, I, you had a big game, and I love to see it. Uh, the offensive line is definitely going to have to play better. We know all these things. Um, I thought it was weird. Ja'Cory Brooks got a catch early and then didn't play again. I guess he didn't get hurt. We were just being precautious. Or uh, cautious, not precautious. I don't know this, but I think he got hurt in a very minor way. I think he's fine, and he'll be fine for Auburn. But my guess is he was – got banged up and, and they're like, well, screw it. It's Austin P. You're not going to play a uh, one quick thing. Cause I, I just ran through these stats for a post I did, you know, it, it's going to be something I ran about the off season a lot, but Jermaine Burton became our leading crew yesterday. Uh, he now has, really? he has 34 catches and Ja'Cory Brooks has 33 uh, on the season, but we've played 11 games. And I think one of the most damning things you can say about our offense and what's wrong with it is, and I realize Bryce's shoulder's been hurt, and that's probably the biggest factor on offense the whole season. But um, Jermaine Burton averages three catches per game. That's it. Three catches per game. Ja'Cory Brooks, neck and neck with him for most receptions, three catches a game. Uh, Jimmy. That's all, that's all we're getting from Batman and Robin is, <laughs> is three catches and three catches. And that's it. And we've got a returning Heisman winning uh, quarterback and an offense that was supposed to be super explosive. And as a whole, uh, added this up, the first team wide receiver rotation, which is made up of six guys, there's only six guys. We've added Kendrick Law as a seventh member of the first team wide receiver group. They average per week 11 catches. First of all, that's it. That's not Batman and Robin. That's more like uh, the Wonder Twins, and they're not there every Saturday. You know what I mean? <laughs> like we're like, yep. you remember how one of the Wonder Twins would be like, form of a bucket of water? Like, what the hell would you want to do that for? Because <laughs> one of the Wonder Twins would be like, form Who are you fighting the Wicked Witch of the West? Form of go half Godzilla, half King Kong, and the other one would be like, form of a mop. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I always did wonder that. Like, he could turn into water, but how did he also turn into a bucket? (laughs) But anyway. um, Thanks for your help, twin. I'm a freaking King Kong having to do all this on my own. You're just cleaning up the mess with your bucket (laughs) and your mop. So, uh, yeah, but going back to that, that is, oh, that is so scary. Yeah, yeah. So 11 catches catches per game for the entirety of the wide receiver core, 11. And and now we've completed a lot of balls and Bryce's numbers are good because so many receptions have gone to the backs and even Cam Latu, you know, at tight end who's caught almost as many. But uh, Jimmy, yep. let me ask you this. It, is there a chance Jermaine Burton can come back, or, you know, yes. because of COVID year? Yes. Okay, so you think yes. he'll be back? I, I actually don't think he'll be back. You think he's going to go pro? I do. And, and, again, I'm not operating on – see, with that going pro stuff, I, I've, I'm a pretty good guesser through the years. I admit I'm, I'm pretty good batting average. Now, I'll never bat 1,000, never. Like, for instance, one year ago today, I would have said, battle's leaving and Slade Bolden the stand. And then I got both them wrong. I mean, no, no one bats a thousand. I don't talk to these kids uh, and their parents, and they don't tell many people uh, about what their plans are, particularly this time of the year. So basically, everybody's guessing. But yeah, my guess, pro, and I think Luke, several for the first time, for the first time really in the whole Saban era, I think several kids will go pro who shouldn't. Most of the time, our kids have made good decisions throughout the Saban era. Most of the time, we'll have like maybe one kid per year who goes pro that shouldn't, in my opinion. Uh, this year, Luke, I think several kids will leave when they shouldn't. And yes, it is indicative of whatever the problem has been all season long. Do you think some of them will be encouraged to, to move on? I think no. I think the only ones encouraged to move on uh, will only be two or maybe three. I think Will and Bryce will be encouraged to move on. I think Jameer Gibbs might be. I think every single other kid who's not a senior. Now, some kids are seniors, and they can still come back. I'll give you an example. Like Henry Toto, he's a senior. Uh, he could come back and play his COVID year. I don't think he will, but I think we're just going to treat him like a senior who doesn't have that option. Byron Young. He could come back. He won't. There's no real reason to. He's a senior. But what I'm talking about are juniors, like Eli Ricks. I think he may go pro. I think it's a big mistake. I I think he should come back and prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's a first-round pick instead of coming out in a year where maybe he goes in the first, but he's played so little. And he what has he proven in his contract year, you know, to come out? I, I think he should stay. I, I, I'm if he on get Gibbs should probably go ahead and go and, and and totally different reason and that is it's not like Gibbs is going to come back and get bigger. I mean, what what would he come back and, and we know exactly what he is and he needs to go in the NFL and make a check before he, he times out. You know? I, I I did look at a mock draft yesterday. It had Gibbs in the first round to Philadelphia. It had Ricks in the first round. I can't remember who he went to. Um, and it had Toho Toho and Byron Young both in the second round. So I'd be shocked if any of them came back. I'm like you. Um, and and while we all, most Alabama fans believe Toho Toho has been good, not great, he's sort of got a trade to priest vibe about him to me. I don't know if that's a good comp or not, but I mean, he's sort of like got a lot of talent, but hadn't really, you know, and every now and again makes a play and you're like, I want to see more of that. And you don't see quite as much of that. Um, he's, he's more trade to priest than he is, say, C.J. Mosley. You know. Oh, I certainly agree with that. I think Henry's one of the most interesting draft, uh, uh, you know, cases on on the team. Uh, there's a lot of on my board on the Bam Insider board. There is a ton of Henry Toa Toa critics, a ton yeah. of them. And I, 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 it's not that I think they're all blind or I think they're all wrong. I just think they're over exaggerate the issues. It's sort of like, hey, one year ago, one year ago, when people were talking about Toa Toa coming out early, I was like. Y'all, I don't think he's a great NFL prospect. I think y'all need to slow down on the he's going to leave because I think he's a day two pick, if that, and probably day three. And I, I, so I was saying that a year ago. So that's always kind of where I set my bar anyway. Now I read this stuff and they're all like, Toto is not going to play a down a pro football. He's an undrafted free agent. He's terrible. We should bench him and play Kendrick Blackshire. He's hurt. You know, he's hurt, by the way. Uh, and it's, you know, Henry, 
Henry is really, really good at stuff fans don't see or appreciate. Right. And in my mind, for a five-star type, and I don't think he was a five-star, I think he was a four, but for a highly recruited kid, he is more overachieving blue collar to me than this super gifted kid that was born to play on Sunday he has made himself into that guy. And he does it by effort and smarts. It ain't because he's big. He ain't. Ain't because he's fast. He ain't. Uh, he's not superhuman strength strong. No, he's just hardworking and smart. And he's willed himself into this position. And Nick Saban loves him. Jimmy, I think he just came up with a new country song called Henry Tolo Tolo. I ain't fast. I ain't strong. You know, just do the whole thing. Uh, all right. That's going to do it. Uh, next podcast, I do want to talk about the potential of uh, Lane Kiffin to Auburn. Get on that a little bit more and start yeah. talking about Auburn, breaking it down a little bit. It's Thanksgiving week, so um, we'll be sort of – not as usual about the times we come out, but we'll do the best we can. Guys, appreciate you so much, and we will talk to you tomorrow. Until then, roll tide. Roll tide.